the auto ionization of water and KW. All right, so first we're going to remind ourselves of a few terms, and this is regarding Bronsted Lowry acids and bases. So remember that acids donate protons and bases accept them. So here we have our acid, which is donating a proton to water and also forming chloride anion, which remember is the conjugate base. Here we have a base, ammonia, that's reacting with water and it's accepting an H plus from water to form ammonium and then hydroxide. Now, water can act as either an acid or a base and we saw this in the previous presentation. We didn't make a big deal out of it yet, but here we have a strong acid, it's reacting with water, and water is acting as a base in this reaction. It's accepting a proton from that strong acid. And then we can also see water acting as an acid, where now it's donating an H plus to ammonia, and it's gonna form ammonium and hydroxide. So that's water acting as an acid. Now, amphiprotic means that a substance can act as either an acid or a base, and water is amphiprotic. So now, let's go back to the concept of conjugate acid-base pairs, and let's add a few more labels to our reactions. Okay, so conjugate acid-base pairs are related species that differ only by a proton. Okay, so here we have our acid, hydrofluoric acid, and then the conjugate base, which is the fluoride anion. Here we have our base, ammonia, and the conjugate acid, ammonium. Now let's label the water conjugate acid-base pairs because those exist as well. So here we still have our acid and our conjugate base for hydrofluoric acid. But now we're gonna say that water is the base because it is acting as a base in this reaction. It's accepting an H plus to form a conjugate acid, and that's hydronium. So here's the base, and there's water's conjugate acid when water is acting as a base. Let's do the same thing if we dissolve a weak base, or any base, into water. So here we still have our conjugate acid-base pair for ammonia, and then ammonium, and then also here we have water acting as an acid because it's donating a proton to ammonia and the conjugate base formed is hydroxide. Here is a conjugate acid base pair for water. What happens if there isn't an acid or base in solution? Does water react with itself? And actually it does. And we call this the auto ionization of water. So here, and it doesn't matter which one is the acid, which one is the base, so I've labeled the first one as a base, second one as an acid. These guys react with each other, and we are going to have an equilibrium concentration of hydronium and hydroxide. So here we have our base and the conjugate acid for the first water, and acid and conjugate base for the second water. Now let's go ahead and write an equilibrium constant expression for this auto ionization of water. Okay, so this is a little bit of a reminder of what we did in the equilibrium chapter. So here we have water reacting with itself and it's in equilibrium with hydronium and hydroxide. Remember when we write an equilibrium expression, we're gonna have the products over the reactants. Okay, so hydronium and hydroxide are the products. The coefficient is one for each of those. And then, remember, for pure liquids and pure solids, the activity is one. So I put those in there explicitly, but we often leave them out. And that's from our heterogeneous equilibria discussion. In pure water at 25 degrees C, Kw, which is the equilibrium constant for water, Kw is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. That's at 25 degrees C. So now our expression looks like this. And then we're going to go ahead and put in 1 times 10 to the negative 14, which is the value for Kw, the equilibrium constant for the auto ionization of water. 
and we're going to put in that value, and then we will be able to calculate the concentrations of hydroxide and hydronium in pure water at 25 degrees C, and that's 1 times 10 to the negative 7. All right, so after this discussion, what should you be able to do? You should be able to identify whether water is acting as an acid or a base in a reaction. You should be able to write the chemical equation for the autoionization of water. And you should be able to identify conjugate acid-base pairs for the autoionization of water and then all of the other reactions that we have discussed. Okay, so next we're going to talk about pH, pOH, and pKW. And that'll be part three.